Today's video sponsor is GVG where using my SKG discount code leads to a 25% off across several products, making a Windows 10 serial key only $16. After the payment, you'll receive the key in your account and all you need to do is to introduce it in your Windows settings and BAM! You have an activated system. So if you were one of those that were complaining about AMD not releasing drivers in months, now you finally have drivers for all or almost all AMD cards since like 2017 for your GPU once again. And now you have the second driver in two weeks. Okay, the first one was the 23.2.1 that brought a lot of fixed issues. And I mean a lot of fixed issues alongside many performance increases, mostly in ray tracing performance, as you can see in this video particularly. And now we have an even better one with way more fixes and still more performance increases for the newest games. And I can tell you right away that these drivers, the 23.2.2 are very good drivers, better than the 23.2.1 in my opinion overall. Uh, and they are definitely a very good step in the right direction, okay? So as I said several times, we have the 23.2.2 drivers. And as I say in all my videos, 23 is the year, 2023, 2 is the month February and 2 is the revision in that same month, so the second revision of February. By the way, this time the drivers are not only WHQL signed, meaning that Microsoft actually acknowledged that the drivers are good to be released according to Microsoft's standards anyway, so they are not only WHQL signed, but they are also recommended by AMD. The previous ones, the 23.2.1, were not recommended, they were WHQL signed, but they were not recommended uh, and I do believe that it was that scenario or it was the case of not being recommended because um, it was having some issues with Windows according to to some users where the drivers somehow messed with a, with a booting of the Windows, mostly on Windows 10 and messed the system and so on. It seems to not happen on the 23.2.2 as they are recommended now, recommended by AMD, okay? Just that. And now, before going into the release notes, just let me tell you that if you're looking for a, a Bluetooth, uh, a Bluetooth and, and wireless keyboard, well, just check the review of this keyboard that I made um, yesterday, actually, that I, re that I released yesterday. A very good and affordable keyboard with wireless, Bluetooth and wired connection, okay? And the same for the mouse, the Darrell A950, that has a very good charging dock system. Also, Bluetooth, wireless and wired connection. So you can use them, well, you can use them easily. Also, a very compact keyboard. I, I mean, it's like my main keyboard now on the, on the testing build that you see right there. So lay an eye on it if you want one. As for the release notes, we start with highlights with support for Atomic Heart that has been released some days ago and Company of Heroes 3 with up to 13% performance increase um, with a 7900XTX, which is very nice. This at 4K, meaning that maybe at 1440p and 1080p, the performance difference is even higher up to 14% uh, using the 7900 XT, up to 9% with the 6950 XT, also very good, and up to 9% with a 6800 XT, oh, and there's more, up to 7% with the 6650 XT. I did not test Company of Heroes 3 because I do not own the game and I wouldn't play it anyway, uh, but I can tell you that in terms of some games like Atomic Heart and Returnal, the performance is a bit better, at least on the 6000 series GPUs. On the 7000 series, it's kind of a mixed bag. Anyway, very good for people playing Company of Heroes 3 because we do have a very, very good performance increase. Now, as for the fixed issues, we have some very, very important fixed issues that were annoying some people uh, and that were actually diminishing the experience, the, the fullness of the experience for some people. So, well, we start with corruption may be briefly observed when moving Netflix video between displays or minimized to full screen on some AMD products such as the Ryzen 7 6800U. Maximum encode bitrate is limited to 100 Mbps for certain applications 
also fixed this is this was a bug that was bugging some people on the 6000 and 7000 series it, it seems according to the to the comment section so it seems to be fixed so great i mean great AMD bug report tool pop-up or system hang may be observed after driver upgrade on some hybrid graphics notebooks. Also a recent bug that was fastly fixed, very fastly, if fastly is even a word. Application crash may be observed while playing Hitman 3 with ray tracing settings enabled, also fixed. Volve Index VR headset may show a blank screen with 144 Hz refresh rate setting on Radeon RX 7000 series GPUs. Also, it seems that with, um, with the most recent drivers, the 23.2.1 and the 23.2.2, .2, this one, it seems that VR performance on the 7000 series is much better. So if you have a VR headset, just try these drivers and let me know in the comment section if the performance actually is better or not. Because once again, I want to know and I believe that the community wants to know as well. Certain videos played with movies and TV may briefly show corruption when moving the window between displays on some AMD graphics products such as the AMD Radeon RX 6700 XT, a very important bug fix as well, and situational performance drop may be observed in DirectX 11 based games on Radeon RX 6000 series GPUs using Ryzen processors. And this was something that I did not notice, but I'm glad it is fixed because situational performance drops uh, on Radeon RX 6000 series and Ryzen processors when running the X11 titles on Windows 11 is not, it's not great. I mean, it's not even good, it's bad. So having it fixed, just great. AMD drivers have been getting better and better with time, but there are still lots of known issues like NVIDIA drivers do. NVIDIA drivers tend to have less known issues, but they still have known issues. On the AMD side, we still have some. With high idle power as situationally be observed when using high resolution and high refresh rate display panels, um, displays in this case, sorry, on Radeon RX 7000 series GPU. So the high idle power is still an issue, it seems, which is kind of disappointing. I do not have those issues. Uh, actually, the power draw uh, while video while doing video playback on the 7000 series has been improved considerably on my monitor, 1440p ultra wide, 160Hz, but some people with 4K 120Hz displays and so on still have the high adult power situational problem uh, and it's very, 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 very annoying and should not happen in any case scenario, okay? Video stuttering or performance drop may be observed during Gameplay Plus video playback with some extended display configurations on Radeon RX 7000 series GPUs. Application crash may be observed while opening premium gold packs in EA Sports FIFA 23. So they said it was fixed on the previous drivers, but it seems to not be fixed. So they put it once again on the known issues. It seems to be fixed for some uh, for some users, but not for all users and ends having it on the known issues once once more. So <laughs> it's what a what a mess. What a mess. You say it is fixed, but then it isn't. Then you put it back on the known issues. Some virtual reality games or apps may experience lower than expected performance on Radeon RX 7000 series GPUs, okay? It seems that VR performance is better, but in some applications or some virtual reality games, it seems that the performance is still very, very bad on the RX 7000 series, or at least those cards are underperforming. They should be much better and they aren't delivering the full potential uh, of the architecture or the full potential of that GPU specifically because of the drivers, okay? Brief display corruption may occur when switching between video and game window on some AMD graphics products such as the Radeon RX 6700 XT, Matrix overlay may intermittently resize to 50% after gameplay, which, which sucks. And the final one, corruption may be observed in Returnal in some certain scenes with ray tracing enabled on the RX 6000 series GPU. So I finished the game already uh, with a 7900 XTX um, and I saw no corruption, but it seems that it is only affecting some RX 6000 series, so I don't really know. Um, anyway, yeah. Yeah, 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 and yeah guys, basically that's it. As for my experience, I only had one issue, which is not 
kind of a super annoying issue, but it is there. And the issue I actually have uh, has to do with the first time that you install the driver. So you run DDU, you reboot the, the computer, you install the drivers once again, reboot once more. And when you run the first, um, the first reboot after installing the drivers, the drivers won't come up automatically and you have to go to the taskbar, search for AMD Adrenaline software and open the AMD Adrenaline software. After that, it will work flawlessly, but the first time you actually have to force open the AMD software, which makes no sense. This does not happen on the 23.2.1 drivers, but happens once again on the 23.2.2, on the 23 .2 .2, sorry. Uh, maybe it's something that has to do with Windows 11, but at least for me, it happens both on the 6800 and on the 7900 XDX. As for the performance, we did have more performance on Returnal, where I tested, and Atomic Heart on the, on the RX 6800. Strangely, we did have more performance on the 7900 XTX on Returnal, but on Atomic Heart, we actually have a slightly less performance than with, the, than with the previous drivers that do not support Atomic Heart. So, <laughs> I, I sincerely don't understand why, but... It is what it is, maybe just a little less performance in that specific part of the beginning, maybe it has more performance in the end or in the mid part of the game, I don't really know, but at least on that specific part that I tested, it had a bit less performance on the 7900 XTX. And that's all for today's video, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video. As always, leave your comment in the comment section, letting me know the experience, your experience with these drivers, uh, because I'm actually sharing mine. So let me know yours. Let me know if it actually is an improvement versus the previous drivers, the 23.2.1, or even versus the 22.11.2, sorry. Let me know if it is or not, even if you're running a 5000, 6000, or 7000 series, because it is very important for the community overall. Uh, by the way, if you're asking yourself why I do not do these videos for the, for the NVIDIA part, so for the NVIDIA drivers, I did one like some months ago, but People didn't watch it much, so I stopped doing it, okay? Uh, but overall, if you think, I mean, there, it seems there are some people that think that I'm a fanboy somehow. I mean, I have lots of NVIDIA cards tested and sometimes I advise NVIDIA cards over the AMD ones, uh, which is the case sometimes with the 4070 Ti versus the 7900 XT. I advise the XT for some things, but over, overall I do advise the 4070 Ti, at least in this moment. I have several videos, not now because I, I still did not start testing uh, CPUs once again because I just finished retesting the 6600 XT and the 6550 XT, then I will retest the 70, uh, the 70, the 6700 non XT, sorry, my brain just stopped uh, to do another video. After retesting all the cards, I will start retesting the, the CPUs. But, but on my previous videos that I have of Intel CPUs versus Ryzen ones, for example, I did advise getting, for example, the, um, the 10400F in, back in the days versus the 3100 because it made no sense and the prices were close. I did advise getting, for example, the 12600K versus the 5600X if you're buying new back in the days as well because it was the same price. The 12600K actually had more cores for more multi-threading performance and it was performing better in terms of uh, single core scenarios and gaming scenarios as well. So, I mean, I don't really know. I, I believe that the people that call me fanboy don't really know uh, all the work I've done and all the things I do. So if you don't actually know me, if you don't actually know what I do, if you don't actually know what I advise, don't come here calling me things like that because it kind of diminishes my work. Uh, and I'm very, very um, proud of being unbiased. So if you're actually ditching my work you don't, and you don't know my work, just shut up because you are being dumb. This is just a, <laughs> I, I just let this off, but that's basically it. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.